Hello. Today we are going to be showing how to obtain code coverage using the LDRA tool suite and Jenkins. In front of us we have our Safe Utilities project, which contains several C files and we also have two batch scripts to build and clean the project. So in order to show code coverage, we'll need to open up within Jenkins. To show that Jenkins is running, you can see that it is running as a service from within Windows. We'll now open Jenkins up through our browser and go through to manage Jenkins for our settings. We'll be viewing configure system and manage plugins. To start with, we'll have a look at manage plugins. Navigate to the advanced tab, down to deploy plugin, select choose file. There are two options for our HPI files. We have a code review and a code coverage file. The code review one will be discussed in an alternate video, but for today we'll be discussing code coverage. So open that file and then select deploy. I've already in installed this plugin on my system, so I'll not be deploying at this time. But if I return to system configuration and select the option there, navigate down, we'll need to configure a few options. The first ones are two global properties. We have our two environment variables, which one is for our LDRA license, which is required to use our tool suite. And the other one is for our testbed.ini file, which is the backbone of our tool suite operation. To scroll a bit further, we will see the LDRA code coverage section, which has been added after we installed the plugin. We have to specify our default installation folder, which is version specific. So make sure that the version is correct to what you are using. And the same goes for the any file as well. That is also version specific, version 10. We have our default tool type. Now there's two options, tool suite and LDRA cover. Make sure the tool suite is selected unless you are using the point product. Once that is selected, that is correct. And we can now select apply and save. Now we'll, it is time to bring in our project. So we'll select new item name it similar to the project so we'll just call it safe utilities name it's a freestyle project now we can configure our individual project settings so we'll scroll down we'll need to add in several build steps so we can add the first one which is a execute windows batch command i will paste in the command that i have We can see that we have our start weight, we have our TB build import, which is how we bring our project into the tools. We have our build.bat script, which I mentioned before, and the starting directory as well for our source files. We'll need to add a second step, which is for our code coverage plugin to operate. We'll need to add in the file path for our target file, our BTF. Paste that in and we'll need to adjust the work area folder as well. So that is the version that we are using, as we can see, which is 10.03 in this case. We also have our tool suite installation, which is also version specific. And again, we have our any, which has to be the same version. We'll need to select TB publish for our reports to be generated. And we will need to select version 10 as that is what I'm using today. Now that we've completed the pre-build steps, we will need to add in a post-build action, which is to publish our code coverage results. Now, if you select add, we have a default LDRA slash coverage option, which has a default report path for our XML files to be generated when they are. We'll also need to repaste in the tool suite installation directory. So we'll just copy from here and paste that in. And that is everything that we need to do for our project configuration. So we'll select apply and save. And now we are steady and able to run a project build. So we'll select build now. 
it will appear on this box here. And we can either wait for it to be completed from within this project page, or we can select this option and view the console output, which we can see is doing our coverage analysis. It is our spawning our execution history files and developing our reports. And we can see that we have our finish command, yes, and we have a success. And we can see the total of one report are found for our set. And we can also see that it's used our default file path as we specified earlier. So we can return back to the dashboard. We can see that we now have a tick next to our project for a success. We can also see that we have 100% of our set has been able to be covered within Jenkins. And we can see that we have no failed builds. So we'll select our project again. We can see a graphical representation there on the right hand side. And we have our LDRA coverage report. These two options will take you to exactly the same thing. So we can see it as a set overview. If we select the set, we now have the option to view via files. If we were to click on the set, we can see the individual file names. If we hover over any of these options, we can see what percentage we have covered, whether it's statement, branch decision, or MCDC coverage. And depending on the project, you may be subscribed to MCDC, you may not. If we wanted to dive in further, we can have a look at the individual file, such as main. We can see that that's completely covered. And we can also click on the function for the main, and that will show the same. So if we were to go back and select maybe another file, such as safecompress.c, we can see here that we have less than 100%. And if we wanted to click on the individual function, we can also do that. And we can see that the function level of coverage. So we have the option of function coverage, we have the option of file coverage, we have the option of set coverage, and we have our overview as well. Hopefully this video has enabled you to see how the LDRA tool suite in combination with Jenkins can be used to perform code coverage. And as usual, if you wish to find out any more information on this specific feature or anything else that we provide, please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.